My guys up the street a few years ago rode by the garden one weekend and there was nothing there. The next weekend he rode by and we had tomatoes sticking up out the ground about 30 inches. And he asked me, when did you plant your tomatoes? And I said, last week. And he said, how did they grow so fast? And I said, I bought by magic tomato seeds from a guy that made uh, Jack and the Beanstalk seeds. I'll show you what it looks like after we stick them back up. Get the plants in, instant garden. The hardest thing about planting tomatoes that are this tall is you have to dig a big hole because we put a lot of roots in the ground. We use these nylon ties that we cut out of pantyhose and we put it at about where we think the stem will be tied. And then I've dug uh, 26 of the 39 holes. We do them deeper on the left end and the stake end is a sort of slope. So we lay the uh, roots that's in the milk cartons, juice cartons in the bottom and we run it up to the stake up the stake and tie it off so it won't fall or snap and that's the hardest part of doing this is digging the holes the soil doesn't look too bad I'll find you a hunk of clay here in a minute because we always hit a little clay see that piece of clay right there with a little soil above it that means I got below 10 inches digging the hole and you can see some clay there where I dug really deep we got the uh, nylon ties, we still have 13 holes to dig, and now it's time to plant them. These are all about the same size. It looks like the top of the leaves are about 45 or 46 inches. Those right there are a little bit taller. You could take an inch or more off for the trash can. I'm sure most of y'all don't carry your tomato plants 46 miles to plant them but we like to take them out the way we put them in so we don't snap them and I put a oops put a little board here just to keep it from rolling off the table and then we'll just generally take the top one and lift it's like right here and we'll lift this out hopefully without breaking it put it in the hole and uh, tie it to the stake well, that's the root ball out of the orange juice carton. And we've tied it there, and they're so tall, we also tied it there. We got flowers emerging. And we snip off the branches that are under the ground, and the first one so that no branch touches the ground and gets soil diseases. Now all we have to do is 38 more. We will cover the stem and the root ball with some of this soil and before we get all the way to the top of this garden soil we will hose it down with not real forceful water and that way when we cover it with soil we know that the root ball has got enough moisture to sustain itself. This is how we get them out of the garden. You just slowly loosen them around. We've already clipped off the lower branches. It just makes it easier. And we just slide it out of the carton, flip the carton over there in the pile, and then I generally hand it to my bride. Well, we gently planted. I laid these all in. We tied them up. We're going to have to put a second tie on them to keep them straight. The first ties just so that they won't snap off. And then we'll cover the soil all the way up to almost the stake. Then on like that one, see. You can pull it down a little bit and run it all the way to the stake. And that's a probably 14 inches plus about 8, so that'll be a heck of a root. That one's a perfect way it would lay. The thing is there, the, the root ball is there. And normally we would have more roots than that, but we had a lot of cloudy days this year, and that's why they're a little taller and not hadn't turned purple. purple. But see the way that stem is laying there, you can pull soil right up to it. and. Uh, you get a lot of them in the ground, just like that. Now I bring these to my wife and I hand them to her by the root ball and I hold the top. She lays the root ball down. I lay the top down against the stake and she takes it with her hand and ties the knot in the nylon hose. And now she's covering them over. And the reason we have three holes empty, there's one hole on the other end 
that I needed to dig a little deeper is each one has about room for 10 or 11 plants and one trash can has an assortment of all three and until we get to that one we uh, won't fill this row in. We try to have all the same tomatoes in the same row. Last year got her to kilter and this year we made sure that we could just pick better boys in one row and and Fourth of July is in one row and sweet millions in one row. If you haven't tried Fourth of July, it's a salad tomato. It's about that big around and it is prolific. It really puts out tomatoes and it's a good tasting tomato and you can wash it off and just stem it and cut it in full pieces and drive it on a salad. Well, that's the second row. We're taking a hose down here. These were a little dry, so we were watering a little bit. And then we water them a lot before we cover them up. And I just finished digging 13 more holes over here. We might get it in today. Well, there's the difference in the tomatoes after just putting them in the ground. Uh, we still got five or six to put up on the end. They're still in the other 32 gallon trash can. Instant garden. Well, after you get them all planted, we take out our uh, irrigation system. And last year, I used to put it together every year. And last year, I folded it over each other and put it up in the loft part of that boat house. And uh, it was a lot easier to put it on the ground. These have been pulled around, pulled out of the way. We put the irrigation behind each one of the tomato plants. And when that little place right there got pulled too far and that one was tight to the stake, it snapped it right in half. But we had a spare, so we, that's the only one we broke. And we put compost on it. And since I'm going to take this compost pile down and make two rows under it, plus a row on the edge there, because here's a row, that'll be a row, and it'll be two more over there. And it's a lot easier to take this fence down. So I just pulled it, which took a bit because it was buried, and folded it over there. We're taking the light stuff off and floor, putting it over there. And at the end, we'll put all the light stuff on that compost pile over there. Well, we started working on that compost pile. We've got it covered on these uh, 39 tomato plants, and we've got our irrigation down, and it is dripping. And this compost will keep the weeds down, and we will also backfill this with, uh, see all those leaves over there? We'll put those over top of this compost and over top of the walk areas. The nice, the, the reason we have to put stuff over top of this is from the other part of this video you saw the uh, end of this plant is right here and it's very soft and if you stepped on that soil you'd go down and you could break the stem or damage the roots this gives it a little more cushion when you put the leaves on it it's even more cushion and as it sets up you can walk down on here to pick fruit and not harm anything and and then when we cut our grass in case that's not enough dry loose stuff and we'll use that on the end uh, to just as a weed barrier but when we cut the grass we have a bagger and I'll just pull the lawnmower up right here and walk down the aisle with the bagger and dump the bags in here and it really does keep down on the weeds plus all that breaks down and goes into your soil next year <laughs> 